Neil O'Neill from Northamptonshire is about to face the dragons. He's brought along his eco-friendly power-saving invention that he claims will reduce carbon emissions. Neil is looking for an investment of £50,000 and he's ready to part with 12% of his company in return. Hi, I'm Neil O'Neill and I'm going to show you the Power Ridge. Uh, this is a micro system, a unique micro system this is, that creates electricity from a domestic house. Now we're looking for 50,000 for a 12% equity in our uh, company. This is an early prototype and this centerpiece here is called an impeller. And this sits on the top of a roof in a house under a ridge tile, the tile that's on the top of a roof. The air comes up the roof, turns the impeller, comes out the other side, and with the motor on the side, it generates electricity. So there's the shape of the impeller, and that's, that's the general principle of the power ridge. What we have here is a rig to test it and to prove the concept. So as you can see, this is a mock-up of a roof. Here is the ridge tile. Here is a power ridge unit under the ridge tile. As you can see, it's almost invisible. The air comes up through this gap, goes over the impeller, and comes out the other side. So we'll test this now. So you can see it in action. So this, this fan here uh, gives us an, an air source. We can turn the multimeter on. And already we're cre creating 1.2 volts. And the power ridge is designed not to actually run the appliances in a household, because obviously the wind runs at different times, at different strengths, so it can never directly run an appliance. But this runs a battery pack, which is a, a common technology that's used in the turbine industry that stores the power and then runs the lights. Okay, now we have a UK patent on this. This was approved last year. Uh, we are develop we're looking for a, a nine-month development project to cr create a production-ready prototype that we will then license to the market, and that's why I'm here today. However, I also have one of two teasers for you. If you invest in this, I can give you tax-free profits. The other teaser, if we get into negotiation, I'll explain that to you. Thank you for listening. Neil, uh, you're you. welcome to come up and see. We're at 1.42 at the moment, volts. Yeah, okay. Got to eyeball that real quick. Yeah. Yeah. So we just got a voltmeter here. You can see. Uh -huh. And if you turned it the other way, it would work the other way. So if the wind was coming the other way, it would work again. So this is totally self-standing. And it's got the voltmeter reading. It's a confident pitch from Neil, who is eager to plug the virtues of his energy-saving device. The inventor is clearly very knowledgeable about his subject, but he's left Julie Meyer with some fundamental questions. I'll turn this off so we can carry on discussing without the noise. Neil, hi, yeah, sure. I'm Julie. Hi, Julie. Um, now, uh, forgive me if I'm missing something very basic. Okay. However, You're is forgiven. it not true that the wind blows at different speeds and different times, but you have a consistency of need for electricity in your house. Yep. So how does your device um, negotiate the um, changing wind with the consistency of need for electricity? Do you have, it, does part of what you do store the electricity That's and it delivers? That's what the battery delivers? pack is, that was like explaining with the battery so pack. It, it, okay. so, you have all these on a ridge, yeah. and the last one is what's called a terminating block, okay. which collects all the electricity from the ridge, yep. and it brings it down to a pack which has batteries in, a bit like okay. a caravan, okay. which then has an inverter which creates it to be used in the house. For how long? Well, that depends on how much wind, and it depends how many batteries, and it depends on what load you put on that system. So We think that we would be able to run the lights on most houses using efficient light bulbs uh, effectively free. So, Neil, what's the cost of one of these units? Well, we, we anticipate between 20 and 22 pounds per unit, but obviously you need more than just the unit. There's a whole system behind it. Okay, so how many of these units will a typical roof need? Um, the average roof we see is 25. The normal semi-detached roof would take, take 25. So it, it's modular to the so, roof. So assuming um, it's an average house that's got 20, 25, 25 yeah. of these, yeah. okay, you're quite convinced it would power the lights for that house? 
Well, again, if you've got 10 chandeliers, it's not going to do that. But if you're sensible with light and you don't have them on the whole time and a lot of other things happening, there's a good chance it will, yes. I mean, the way I, I like to explain this is it's a bit like a central heating system. Okay. These are the radiators, the wiring are all your pipes, and the battery is like your, your boiler. So it's, it's, a, it's a similar type concept. It's a novel idea, and Neil has grabbed the dragon's attention. But the millionaire investors are here to make money, and Shaf Razul has made an important observation. OK, so you're asking us to invest £50,000 in a very high-risk venture. Yeah. OK, because there's hundreds of other companies doing exactly the same thing. No, but you forgot the very last thing I said. I said I'll give you tax-free profits as well. And I've also got something else in my back pocket we can talk about later. But I've offered you tax-free profits. So you're balancing your risk with a, a very attractive tax-free profit situation. You know, I'm interested in about what the investment opportunity is. Effectively, the opportunity is invest £50,000 yep. and there's a snowball's chance in hell that I might be the person that invents the green product and you'll get £100,000. No, this, this, this isn't going to change the world. So, Neil, I want to hear about the tax-free profits. Yeah. That's fine. Okay, so that's... I'll come back to you, Julie. You're obviously you're engaged in this. I've got a bit more work to do with you here. This isn't the greatest project in the world. It's not the greatest thing since sliced bread. It's one of many ways that together we're going to reduce the carbon, uh, carbon emissions in this world. This is just one piece in that jigsaw. Neil's got off to a bad start with Shaf Razul, who uncharacteristically seems stunned into silence. Fortunately for the entrepreneur, Julie Meyer is still keen to see if she can get her hands on a bargain. So, tell me what you got in your back pocket and your tax-free okay. profits, please. Tax-free profits. We want our company to be registered as what's called an EIS. Anyone aware of an EIS? Very aware of EIS. Enterprise Investment Scheme. Yes, okay. all of my companies are EIS. Perfect, so you know if you make any profits from uh, cashing in your shares, they are tax-free. That's part of the scheme. My back, back pocket card yeah. is that if you put your 50,000 in and it fails, you'll lose nothing. Uh -huh. Because? Because, again, as you know, the EIS, if it fails, at the end of the EIS, you get 48% back as a tax relief. Okay. Got it. So after three years, your 50,000, you will have it back. Right. So the risk has <laughs> now been reduced to zero, but the profit and the potential has now hit the, the roof. Zero risks and maximum profits. It all sounds too good to be true. Julie Meyer wants to find out a bit more about this plucky inventor. So, Neil, I would be fascinated to know what else you um, have done before um, starting on your inventions in the green space. What, what else? Tell me a little bit more about your background. Do you really want to know that? Uh, I think it's quite important, actually, yeah. OK, I've got a... Just some highlights. Some highlights. Some highlights. Yeah. 50 years of highlights. OK. Um, I've got a football portal. Okay. Now you, you obviously don't you don't follow football, but I think you write about it. Yeah, I, I, write, it, I write about it from time to time. Yeah. yeah. So if you wanted, I can give you the email address chef at celticfc.com. I've got a musicians portal. I've got musicians reunite. Okay. In 1982, I uh, got to number 19 in the German charts. So I have a small record label doing specialised hard rock. I've had a number of website ideas and things I've got up there, but a lot of them are still there, just sit sitting, over, sitting there doing nothing at the moment. So, so how many businesses have you got at the moment? I've only got two. You've only got I've two. I've got this one and uh, my internet company, which has all my domain names, all my domain name ideas. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, effectively, you strike me as a, a serial entrepreneur. You've just rattled off half a dozen businesses that, you're, that you've been involved in? Well, I've got a lot of energy, and if it, sometimes it goes into business, sometimes it goes into crazy things like this. So Neil is no shrinking violet when it comes to his impressive CV, but will it win him favour in the den? Julie Meyer has come to a decision. I like you. Thank you. I... Don't like this. Not into this. Right. Um, I'm not sure you are either, to be honest. Um, you just called it a crazy thing. I think um, but you have I... the most impressive kind of an enterprising background and, and reflects a lot of energy and ideas. And uh, there's some way that you need to harness it to make serious amounts of cash, but I'm not sure that I have the, I'm not sure that I'm the right person to work with you okay. to do that. 
I, I think what you've, ex you've kind of explained just, you know, talking about the way that you've lived your professional life, there's a, there's a kind of doggedness to take anything all the way through to make money on that. I, I'm not hearing that from your track record. Okay. I'm hearing that you're actually pretty good at bringing kind of things to life, but I, I haven't heard that you've made money um, from any one of them in a serious way. I'm kind of here to make money, if you know what I mean. And so, you know, I think for those reasons, I think it's been absolutely fascinating, but I think I'm, I'm out. Thank you for listening, Julie. I understand. Neil's self-assured approach is starting to backfire and he's lost Julie Meyer. Now, Shaf Razul wants to have his say. Neil, tell me about the, the two businesses you've got at the moment. Um, one is this, Parage Limited. Uh -huh. And the other one is the, uh, it's, it's called CompuLab Limited, and it's just, I've been in the IT industry now since 93. I know this isn't my field, I just have the idea, and I know the potential behind this. So, my space is, is the IT industry generally, and CompuLab's been going since March 97. So, how much is CompuLab worth as a business? Um, at the moment, it's not, it's not creating, over, over the years, I mean, I think the highest it's created in one year was probably 200,000. Okay, but, so what's, what's it worth as a business today? It, it, it doesn't have a, uh, a balance sheet. I'm not here to sell CompuLab. You've asked for my experience, so I don't have figures and I don't have anything committed for CompuLab. And I probably wouldn't want to let you know anyway, other than it's not making... Uh, okay. I mean, personally, if it was me, if I had a surefire idea, okay, yeah. it was going to make so much money, if I had to sell one of my other businesses to do that, I oh, would do that tomorrow. I would absolutely do that. And that you turning around and saying, I don't know what it's worth, I've no idea, you've obviously not explored that. And it sort of brings me down to the fact that perhaps you've not got confidence in this product. The, 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 the issue is, the money isn't the issue. What is the issue? If someone gave me 50,000 or 100,000 tomorrow free, if I win it on the lottery, that's not going to put this in the market. I need clout. I need somebody who can go in to a Japanese manufacturer and say, Right, can you make a specialised motor for this? I can't do that. I need someone that's going to go into maybe Strathclyde University or Swansea University and say, I need an aerodynamic specialist who can help me with these airflows to get the efficiency here. I can't do that. And I can't, all the money in the world, I'm Joe Okay, Boston so you've just changed your pitch. Now, money's not the most important thing. It's contract. Money will help me create a product, but I need somebody who's then going to sell that product. In the past, I've had many, many other things, but you can have the best thing in the world, but if nobody knows about it, it's worth nothing. Neil, I'm going to sum this up for me. You are a very good salesman. Okay? You are absolutely, without a doubt, a very, very good salesman. <laughs> and you can change your sales tactic to whatever situations is required. You know, if you don't need the money, you shouldn't even be here. No, I, I need both. I need money and I need influence. Okay. influence I mean, if you don't need else. the money, you shouldn't even be here. You've got, allegedly, a very successful business that you could basically sell a percentage in tomorrow. You could fund this, no problems. On that basis, I'm out. No problem. Thank you very much. Good luck to you, Neil. Thank you. Bye. Neil's blown it. He failed to convince the Dragons of his commitment to the project, and he's been dispatched from the den accordingly. Do you know what? He'd really get my nerves if I invested in him. <laughs> He'd absolutely get on my nerves. I, that was a, I think that was quite a performance there that we witnessed. Yeah. yeah. Hi, Neil. Hi, Dan. How are you? I'm very well. That was fun, wasn't it? Well, you're smiling, but they didn't go for it. How, how are you feeling? Um, well, I can't imagine there's many dragons that are going to be offered a risk-free, no-taxed profit. Are you surprised they didn't jump at the chance? I thought Julie was showing interest. She was. Schaff, um, he was obviously, he showed early on that he'd heard so many stories about green technology yeah. and there being such a letdown that he just... Uh, puts this groups this with uh, the rest of those. Now in the den you were obviously talking about uh, this product a lot but you were talking about yourself and your previous uh, ventures yeah. one of them being number 19 in the German charts. Now all of us yes. obviously remember the track but uh, <laughs> what, what was the name of the song? Had, um, no, it was an album. By, it was an album? By a band called Damien. It was a German right. band I was in at the time. Is there anything you, you can give us now? Any little snippets? Of, of the song? Yeah. Not on, on public television now. Um, well, listen, Neil, best yeah. of luck with the future. This has obviously not deterred you in any way. Not I'd at imagine. all. I mean, this, this is exposure. Yeah. I've got another three that I'll be coming to you with soon. OK. Yeah. Intriguing. I'm, I'm the ideas man. You can't, I can't get them out there. Right. That's why I need somebody like a dragon yeah. to pick it up. And they, I'll just chuck the ideas in the pot. They go yeah. and sell it. So you're using their expertise, but more importantly, their, their profile as well. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah, they, they get taken seriously. Thank you, Sean. Bit of Sean. Right. Uh, best of luck. Yeah. Off you go. I'll out of the den. Thanks, Neil. Cheers. Yeah.